Good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you this morning to St. Matthew's United Methodist Church. My name's Adam. I'm one of the pastors on staff. Whether you're worshiping with us here in the in process of being renovated sanctuary or watching with us online, we are so excited to have you worshiping with us today. If you are a guest with us, we want to say a special word of welcome to you. There in front of you in your uh, pew, you should find a connect card. We would love to get to know you a little better. And then at the end of this morning's service, if you go out the back sanctuary doors and to the left, there's a welcome table there. We would love to greet you and give you a welcome mug to thank you for being with us. Uh, we want to remind you this morning, as we have so many times over the last couple years, if you are on social media, whether you're here in person or watching online, please take just a moment to share this morning service on your Facebook page as a way of inviting your friends and family to join with you. As you came in this morning, you should have received a worship guide, and there are a few announcements there that we want to lift up. Uh, the first one I am super excited about, Wednesday Night Live is back this Wednesday night. We took a little break for the holidays, but we will be kicking things off with a pizza night this Wednesday. Um, all of the already established small groups and music ministries and things like that will be meeting, but then we will kick off new small groups starting on both the 18th and the 25th. Uh, that kind of leads into the next announcement. We are starting another cycle of Financial Peace University. Alan Priest is leading that. And there is a uh, preview on January 18th at 6 p.m. And then the class starts all together on January 25th. So if you have any questions about that, you can just contact Alan and his email address is listed there. The last announcement that's there in your worship guide, you can see that something is going on here in the sanctuary uh, by the number of pews moved around in the back, which still did not cause anybody to sit in the front pews. Uh, I'm not surprised. But we are installing new flooring in the sanctuary. You can actually see a sample of that back kind of where Jerry is standing. But this will be our last Sunday worshiping in the sanctuary for, a, we hope, a few weeks. Uh, so we will be over in Gordon Hall worshiping there. The format and flow of the service will be exactly the same, uh, but just wanted to give you a heads up that that will start next Sunday. And if you know someone who's not here this morning that might need to receive that announcement, help us in passing that along. Last but not least, one that's not in your worship guide, we are so excited to have Reverend Becky Curry uh, preaching for us this morning. If you were here at our 11 o'clock service, you would see Becky and her husband Ken worshiping with us a lot. Uh, but we're so excited to have her uh, preach this morning. Uh, most recently, I guess, Becky was the interim uh, senior pastor at Christ Church United Methodist. Then before that, uh, she was my district superintendent uh, in the Heartland District and also served as assistant to the bishop. Uh, in her retirement, she's taken on an even greater role of keeping an eye on me as a part of our teaching team. And she helps every week uh, with part of our sermon planning and has a wonderful sermon to share uh, that celebrates Baptism of the Lord Sunday. And so, Becky, we're so excited to have you with us. And let's give her a big St. Matthew's welcome this morning. Those are all the announcements I have this morning. I want to invite you to prepare your hearts for worship with me as we hear our opening prelude.
Would you please stand and join me in the call to worship, which is printed in your worship guide. The heavens open, the Spirit descends, Jesus emerges from the water, and a voice echoes through the blue expanse, this is my child, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Jesus is named, claimed. We come to the water, we remember we are named, claimed. Can it be so? What a thing to be named, claimed. Let us worship the one who names and claims us still. If you would, please remain standing and join me in the Apostles' Creed as we affirm our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Amen. You can be seated. As we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, we will leave a time of silence in the midst of our prayer where we want you to say out loud the names of those folks who are in need of prayer in your life. Maybe there's someone who is sick or who's grieving or who you just have on your heart today. Uh, if you're watching with us online, we invite you to type the names of those folks in the comments as well. These are all ways for us as a church family to be in prayer together. You will notice there in your worship guide that instead of the Lord's Prayer this morning, we are also kicking off the new year by praying a covenant prayer together, uh, which was very common in the Wesleyan tradition. Methodists for generations have prayed this prayer uh, at the beginning of the year. Uh, I remember one of the first years we used this in worship while I was here, someone came up to me after worship and said, I'm not praying that prayer. Uh, that's a scary sounding prayer. There's a whole lot of surrender and sacrifice uh, involved in the words we will speak. Uh, as I was thinking about that this morning, though, uh, the thought that came to my mind is that I think our souls need this kind of prayer. Uh, our souls need this kind of surrender. And so I invite you uh, to pray this with us when we reach that point at the end of our prayer time. So let's go to the Lord in prayer together this morning. God, it is so good to be together as a church family. Uh, after the holidays, uh, after all that that entailed, maybe for some the busyness and chaos and travel and full houses, or for others maybe feelings also of, of loneliness and being out of routine and isolation and things just being different, whatever we experience, God, it is good to be in the house of the Lord together. God, we pray that you would encourage our hearts and our spirits through our worship here this morning, that through the songs we sing and the prayers we pray as we hear your word proclaimed, that our spirits would be lifted up and that we would be drawn near to you. God, as we come here together, we realize that we come with many different needs upon our hearts. And before we ever say a word out loud, we just want to know and trust that you know each person already. You know their situations, you know their needs, and you know how best to care for them. And so, God, we take just a moment to lift these names up to you. And for each one, we ask that you would just surround them with your love, your presence, and give them your grace and your peace. Hear us now, God, as we pray. God, we know that this week it has been a difficult week uh, for our church family, especially in terms of loss and grief. God, we lift up to you the family of Linda Garrett, and we lift up to you also the family of Jim Simpson, especially Carol. We trust, God, in your word that tells us you are near to the brokenhearted, and you save those who are crushed in spirit. So God, walk alongside them now in this time of grief and use us to walk alongside them, to be your hands and feet in their lives, to offer them the care and support that they need. God, as we start 2023, we ask that by your spirit you would focus our hearts now on our relationship with you and our commitment to you. Remind us of the words we spoke in our call to worship, that we are a people who are named and claimed. We are your beloved children. And we pray now that as we pray this covenant prayer together, that you would draw us deeper into relationship with you, deeper in our following of you, Jesus. Align our hearts with your heart, that we would love those things you love, be passionate about those things you are passionate about, and seek to join you in the work of your kingdom that you're doing all around us. God, bind our hearts together now as we pray this prayer. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. 
I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine, so be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. As we worship together this morning, we want to continue with our tithes and our offerings. If you're here in person with us, we'll invite our ushers to come forward to receive our offering. If you're watching with us online, remember that you can give by mailing in your offering, by texting to give, or we have a giving portal directly on our website, stmatthewsmethodist.com. But let's honor God with our tithes and our offerings this morning.
God, we ask today that you would help us to be a people of blessing. God, help us to be a people who recognize your blessings in our lives, all the ways, big and small, that you show us you love us. But God, also help us to be a people who bless others, that through our love, our generosity, our care, our service, we would show ourselves to be your disciples. God, we ask your blessing upon our tithes and our offerings today, that through the ministries of this church, they would be a part of your kingdom and your glory in the world. We pray all this in Christ's name. Amen. As you are able, please remain standing for the Old Testament reading this morning from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, let me say that it is a real honor to be the guest preacher this morning. Normally, I am at the 11 o'clock service sitting with Mother and Ken, and we're always ready to hear a good sermon from Adam and to be led in worship with Harrison and Noel and the choir, and I always leave feeling so uplifted. So it has been a joy to worship here at St. Matthew's for the past few years. I'm especially glad to be here today, uh, because as Adam said, it's the beginning of the year. This is the time that if we've made resolutions, uh, this is the place to be so that we can keep them. Uh, January of 23, Oh, one, two, three. 
uh, we have shared together in the Wesleyan uh, Covenant prayer. And, and I don't know about you, but this is a powerful prayer and has guided me throughout my ministry and my life. And we really shouldn't just pray it once a year. We need to keep it close to us and pray it often. Today is also Epiphany Sunday. When we celebrate the arrival of the wise men, it's a day when we think about the gifts that they bring, but we also continue to give thanks for the gift of the Christ child. As the prayer in our hymnal reminds us, by a star in the east, you reveal to all people him whose name is Emmanuel. It's also the time of year when we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. We celebrate that moment when Jesus begins his earthly ministry, that moment when the Spirit of God descends upon Jesus and we hear those words, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus begins a journey that will take him to the cross, but it is also a journey that will take each one of us into the arms of God. It's a time when we must be willing to allow God to move among us, to speak to us, and to affirm that we are God's children. And so this morning we're going to affirm our baptism and Adam will be leading us in that later on, but, but I would like to begin by saying the words of the thanksgiving over the water because that's going to be an important part of my sermon so I'm going to invite you to turn to page 51 in your hymnal and we are going to I guess practice perhaps our thanksgiving over the water because we'll be doing it again later on and so if you'll join me uh, in that prayer Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and you brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercies each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit, and by the gift of water, call us remembrance to the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, you have clothed us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you, Holy Spirit, lives and reigns forever. As I stand here this morning, I need to tell you that I love water. From my childhood, I have spent so much time in the water. Now, if you're from Louisville, uh, maybe not from this part of the town, but maybe from southwest Jefferson County, you may remember Valley Pool. And I was there every day playing and splashing swimming in the water. And after I graduated from high school, I was a lifeguard at that pool. I also lifeguarded at Camp Lucon. Our summer vacations were spent at Lake Cumberland where we skied and played and, and just literally lived in the water. And since my retirement in 2017, I have spent almost every morning at the pool, either doing water aerobics or swimming laps or doing both. I love water. But it was during the time after my retirement that I allowed the water to speak to me. The water brought healing. It brought peace and strength both to my body and to my soul. 
And the words of this baptism liturgy became a part of my swimming routine. I said the words that we shared this morning, and it was so meaningful to me. You know, I would take that first stroke, and I would say, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters. And I did that for several years, and then one day I finally said, I'm saying these words, and Lord, you're listening, but I'm not listening. I'm saying these words for a reason, because you want to tell me something through them. And so I asked God to give me a message. And I hope you'll do the same thing this morning. As you think about your baptism and as you think about the water, what is the message that you want God to give to you? What is the message that you're hearing? So let's think about those words. Uh, when nothing existed but chaos, and I almost have to do this because I'm, I'm swimming, you swept across the dark waters and you brought forth light. It's the creation story. It was the water. There was darkness. And God swept over the chaos and, and he created order. He created light. Now, I don't know about you, but, but I like to create order out of chaos. If there is a problem, I want to be a part of solving it. Uh, my kids call me the fixer, and they don't always say that as a compliment. Uh, but I like to do that. I, I like to fix things. I like to help. And in fact, uh, Adam and Russell and I, when we were ordained, we were ordained to word, sacrament, and order. That goes to all elders. When I was a district superintendent, I had to remind some of the preachers that their job was to order the life of the church. And God knows there were many times when we need to, needed to make order out of chaos. And maybe even now, as we're dealing with the post-pandemic church, uh, you've been busy re-engaging the congregation. We as a denomination are dealing with the, the questions and the answers about human sexuality. Think about the many issues in our world that are creating chaos, and, and we want to bring some order to that. I remember swimming to these words, and I asked God, what do you want me to hear from this? And this was his message, pretty clearly. God said to me, you're not God, I am. Now can you imagine hearing that? You're not God, I am. And maybe there are many of us here who need to hear those words. As much as we love the church, as much as we want to be change agents, we are not God but rather we need to seek God's guidance and direction in a time of chaos. We need to trust God who loves us and loves the church. We remember those words, for I know the plans that I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. You see, when we allow God to be God, and we allow God to be in charge, the dark waters suddenly become life-giving. So where do you find yourself in the creation story? What is God saying to you? What is God asking of you? What is God reminding you? I truly believe there is a message in the water. And then there's one of our favorite childhood stories. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through the water. After the floods, you set a, a, in the clouds a rainbow. Can't we see those Bible school stories? And, and we want to see those animals marching up to the ark two by two. Well, friends, we need to pause because there have been so many people lately who have been affected by the floods. Our, our friends in eastern Kentucky and right now... California is getting pounded. There are victims in Dallas and Arizona and the hurricanes that have hit Florida. 
And I think of Pakistan, where those people are fleeing the rising waters. We give generously to alleviate their suffering and, and to help them recover and rebuild. I pray that they may find an ark of refuge. Many of us know and love the story of Noah. We love the rainbow, the sign of the promises of God, and it is a feel-good story with a happy ending, at least for Noah and his family. But it is a story of obedience. It is the story of Noah building an ark when there was not a cloud in the sky. It is the story of following very specific blueprints when they didn't make sense it's the story of obedience when you couldn't see an outcome. It's the story of listening to God when all those around you just didn't understand. What is God calling you to do? Can you feel a little nudge? And can you move forward without fear? A fear of failure or a fear of, of what other people may think. Can you move forward without having the blueprints and you don't know what the outcome will be? I remember several years ago when John Cowles was the pastor at Butchwell and he came to me and he said, uh, Becky, there are all these new people showing up and they're from Africa and, and I don't speak their language and they don't understand English, but they keep coming and I know God wants me to do something, but what? And I said, John, I, I have no idea. All I know is that we can pray. And we did because we knew God had a purpose. And then, lo and behold, a young man named Kevin Usinga showed up at his door. Kevin was from Africa and he was multilingual. He too was listening and responding to a, a nudge. And suddenly, Butchwell became a multicultural congregation and friends, now that congregation is being led by Michael Rojas. And so yes, he is leading this congregation multilingual. He is leading the Hispanic congregation. And he's leading all the services. And people from all countries have walked onto the ark. That place, that sanctuary, that church has become their ark, their place of refuge, a place of worship, a place of community. And friends, there is a rainbow in the sky, and God will continue to fill God's promises. And I say, praise God. And I'm so glad that Michael is a part of that. I remember when St. Matthew's began to feel a nudge to expand when, when Eric and Derek were here and, and we kept looking at that property on Low Road and we kept having meetings and we kept praying and we kept knowing something was going to happen. And then one day, St. Matthew's owned that property and now we have River City. And it also expanded to the Hispanic uh, congregation and worship. St. Matthew's has become an ark for people who needed a place of safety, a place of worship, a place to come to know Jesus and to grow closer to him. I think of Larry Stess in the Church of the Promise. Uh, God was at work in the district operation team and we spent hours and hours in prayer and, and Larry had blueprints of an old warehouse that belonged to the uh, Promise Center. And he and Kathy felt a nudge and they shared their dreams and, and their blueprints. And we now have the table, uh, a pay it forward restaurant where people come for a free meal and a church that means so much and meets the needs of the community. This morning, we need to look at the water and ask what crazy thing is God asking us to do? What is God calling you to do? Look at the water and know that there will be storms and there will be floods. What can we do to help people prepare for those storms and for those floods? And what refuge 
can we be for people who need them? Quite simply, what is God calling you to do? What's the nudge? And can you respond without fear? Can you build an ark? And when we think about messages we might uh, receive from the way God uses water, I immediately think of the parting of the Red Sea. The liturgy says, when you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Now, whether you can remember Charlton Heston raising his staff and the seas parting in the, in the movie The Ten Commandments, or, or whether you just read it in Exodus and you've imagined it in your mind, uh, the story begins with the Israelites in captivity. And many of us, too, have to admit that we are captive to the things of this world. We are enslaved to the things that keep us from the freedom that God desires for us. We seek the freedom that God offers us, but we just can't let go. Whether we are addicted to things in this world, to alcohol, to drugs, to food, to gambling, to pornography, even the desire to always be right, and the list could go on and on. God offers us freedom. And as someone said, when the Israelites faced the Red Sea, God didn't remove it. God just provided a way through it. And God still does the same thing for you and me. I'm reminded of the, the verses in Isaiah 43. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you, for I am the Lord your God. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you're baptized, your name, you're given an earthly name, but you're also given a name as a child of God. And that is a message from the water that I want us to hear this morning. I want each one of us to hear God saying to us, I have called you by name, you are mine. I have redeemed you. I have called you and you and you by name, and I have redeemed you. It's a wonderful feeling to hear those words. And may we never forget that message from the water. And then we read, in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Wow. Wonder what God's saying to us in those words. What does it mean to share in his baptism? What does it mean to make disciples of all nations? The message that God has given me is don't allow yourself to be distracted by the things of this world. There are too many children, and I will tell you, my heart has been broken lately as I think about the number of children who do not know the stories of Jesus. They don't know who Jesus is. But there are also too many people, too many adults, who are floundering in this world without a Savior. And Jesus says to me, get busy and tell my story. Get busy and let's make disciples of all nations. Friends, this morning as St. Matthew faces 2020, we must listen for the voice of God. We must remember our baptism and the messages of the water. Whether you're in a pool or a lake or in the shower or whether you're just getting a fresh, cool drink of water. There are messages for us. God will create order out of chaos. He is God and we are not. And we must trust him.
He is the creator, and he will give light and life to us. And like Noah, this may be a time for obedience. The storms and the floods will surround us, but God has provided us a refuge. And in turn, we must give others that refuge. And we must respond without fear. And like the Israelites, we must live in freedom, moving away from those old things that hold us bondage and move through the water as God has planned. For he has called us by name, and we are his. And in our baptism, we die to sin and are raised to life everlasting. Hear these words from our funeral liturgy. Dying, Christ destroyed death. Rising, Christ restored our life. And Christ will come again in glory. As in baptism, we put on Christ, so Christ in Christ we may be clothed in glory. We are God's children, and what we shall be has not yet been revealed. But we know when he appears, we shall be like him. And to that I say glory, and may it be so. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you would join me, you, you may already have your finger there on page 50 in your United Methodist hymnal. You've already practiced, so I expect big things uh, in this liturgy as we remember our baptismal covenant together. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. And so on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. And if you move halfway down page 51, the thanksgiving over the water, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water, and after the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you had promised. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all people. God, pour out your Holy Spirit, and by this gift of water call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins, and you clothe us with righteousness throughout our lives, that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen.
Many of you have done this before, but if this is your first time, uh, during our final hymn, we'll invite you, just like when we celebrate Holy Communion, to maybe start in the back and make our way forward and form a line here. You're invited to come and dip your hand in the water. You can make the sign of the cross either on your forehead or on your hand. Um, the altar rails are not here, but if you would like to stand here and, and have a brief prayer, we welcome you to do that, and then you can return to your seat. Uh, there may be many things on your heart and mind as you come and remember your baptism. Uh, traditionally, the words that are there in your hymnal or what is normally spoken, remember your baptism and be thankful. But I think Becky has given us lots to reflect on this morning that maybe what you're saying in your heart is, God, you are God and I am not. Or maybe you're asking the question, God, what is that nudge that your spirit has in my life? What crazy thing are you calling me to? to be obedient even when I don't understand. Maybe for you it's something focused on identity, that you're remembering that you are a child of God. And how is God calling you to live in freedom? And last but not least, uh, maybe it's just simply asking, God, what is your message for me in the water? And that you would pray that prayer this morning. But if you would, let's stand together. Let's respond with our closing hymn, and if you would like to come forward and remember your baptism, we welcome you to do that.
Amen. We want to thank you so much for worshiping with us this morning. Remember, if you're a guest with us, we would love to greet you after this morning's service and give you a gift to thank you for being with us. Uh, we hope you join us this Wednesday night for Wednesday Night Live. Pizza is my favorite food. You should come just to see how much pizza I can eat. We're, we're going to have a lot of fun together Wednesday night. And then remember to join us in Gordon Hall next Sunday for our worship service. Becky, thank you so much for sharing with us this morning uh, such a wonderful way these past couple Sundays uh, to start the new year together. As you go this morning, would you receive this benediction? May the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ His Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Amen.